Okay, here we are. We are live. Another show, Children's Literature Channel for the New Books Network. And my name is Mel Rosenberg, and I have the honor and the privilege of interviewing a wonderful person and writer, Janie Emus. Hi, Janie. Good morning, Mel. How are you? Did I get everything right? Can you hear me? Yep, yep I can hear you just fine. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Okay, don't be a stranger. Okay, I won't. Well, <laughs> how could I not have you? You have written one of the most intriguing children's books that I've heard about in a long time. Well, I think it's you. called Latkes for Santa Claus. Let's yep. start out with a little bit about the book. Okay. So what is Latkes for Santa Claus? What, as, as we Jews would say, what kind of Michigas is that? <laughs> well, it's a book about a little girl who is celebrating her first Christmas because her father, her mother has married a, a non-Jewish man. And for the first time, she's going to have Santa come and she just knows cookies are so boring. She's going to find something better to give him so he can be introduced to her faith. Meanwhile, her brother, who's been celebrating Christmas all his life, just knows cookies are the best. So it's sort of a showdown between the brother and the siblings. And as they both, you know, work out in the kitchen trying to find the perfect treat for Santa. And it's it's funny. And it, I think it reads well aloud. And it brings the two families together, interfaith, plus a brother-sister story. So, uh, and in the end, the title. Santa the title well, you know, it, it, the title gives everything away, but the title yeah. is so precious, you know. Santa Claus is going to go for latkes. Uh, so now <laughs> the truth is out. Yeah. So anybody who wants to att att attract Santa next December, get a good latkes recipe. And, and your book has a latkes recipe at the end. Yes, the book has the latkes recipe that was handed down from my grandmother to my mother to me, and probably even before that. You know, my grandmother was from Romania, so... I don't know. It, it's a pretty standard recipe, but it, it really is good. It's very laid out really simply for kids at the back of the book. And there's so also a Janie, recipe. Yeah. What, what, what was your maiden name? Singman. Singman. So Janie Singman. Yeah. You're, you're Jewish. You're wearing a chai. Yep. Yeah. And what kind of uh, Mishagas is writing a book about Santa Claus? <laughs> well, I married my husband actually 43 years ago this week. We just celebrate Ka our anniversary. Kainan Hora, uh, Kainan Hora. Yeah, <laughs> and he was not Jewish. And so um, he had two small children and we, before our daughter was born, we did Christmas because of for them. And then my daughter was born. So we kept on doing Christmas and every year we were doing Christmas and Hanukkah. And I started thinking, what do these kids think that are doing both holidays? Is it confusing for them? And um, that's where the idea was born. And then it took many years for me to actually get the book published. It was a long, long haul. Like maybe the world wasn't ready yet. There wasn't so much diversity. People weren't as many blended families. And um, so eventually it, it sold. And that's where the story came from. Well, maybe, Santa, year, maybe, maybe Santa Claus wasn't ready. Maybe, I guess not. <laughs> he does like the latkes though. <laughs> so, so Jamie, you know, uh, one in 5,000 authors gets published. Really? Yeah. So who is your Santa Claus? Like who? How did this happen? Uh, well, um, it was a very interesting story, actually. It took me about 15 years to sell the book. And then as I tell people, it happened overnight because I did a uh, pit mad, if anybody, writers watching know what pit mad is, where you go on and you do your, 20, your 280 character pitch. And if an editor or an agent likes it, then you get to send them your, your pit mad. Your, your query. And of course, I go on and you're nervous, you're watching, I get like a ding and it's somebody selling me auto insurance, you know, all these crazy, you're not, <laughs> supposed to you're not supposed to like it unless you're an editor or an agent. And Nicole Frail, wonderful, God bless her, on a Thursday liked my pitch. On Sunday, I sent her the query. On Monday, I sent her the book. And on Tuesday, she offered me a contract. So it happened like six days. And that's, she is my Santa Claus, I guess. She was that, my. That's, know, a, that, that's how long it took God to make the world. Yep. Oh, you're right. Okay. So, so interesting. So Nicole, Nicole is your Santa Claus. Yep. 
And she's an editor for Sky Pony Press? Sky Pony Press, yes. So you made a deal with her without an agent? Yeah, no agent involved. We, she's, I tried to negotiate a little bit. There was only negotiations as far as, uh, I wanted to make sure the book was in a bookstore. That was very important to me. I've been writing my whole life and I've got small little publications here and there, but I wanted a book in a bookstore. And this book I thought had to be in a bookstore. So it, that was part of the negotiations and it definitely was everywhere. When Barnes and Noble picked it up uh, for their holiday promotion. And then, um, yeah, so that's how it happened. And, you know, we, the book was in such good condition. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I'm bragging about that, but I've been working on the book for so many years that there were very few editorial changes. And then she asked me what I saw as an illustrator, what I envisioned. And I wanted whimsical and fun. I didn't want a creepy old scary Santa Claus. <laughs> and so she, together, we, she found Brian after back and forth. And then he just started working on the book. And I was involved all the way with illustration, every step of the way. Which is very um, uncommon. Right. That was the other thing I've been told by lots of my friends, because I have lots of very successful book, picture, illustrator, you know, uh, authors and illustrator friends. And they didn't even know what the illustrations were going to be like till the book was out or, you know, to, in their hands. So I was very fortunate. I got to go. And one of the things I really wanted to do, Mel, was along the way, because the book was celebrating two holidays, I wanted a balance in the illustrations. So there was one page where there was very heavy on Christmas lights and trees and the little girl's in bed. And I, um, I think my daughter was here and she goes, why don't we put dreidels on her bedspread? So those kinds of things all along, I got to add my, my influence. Yeah, the four Zets is crazy with the, uh, with the dreidels and the, uh, the Christmas tree. Um, do you wanna, for, for those of you who can see, um, not on the podcast, on the video cast. Do you want to hold up the book and just show a um, show the cover and maybe a one double spread? Yeah, the one of my favorite ones is where he's, he's trying to eat matzo balls in the air. Um, let's see, I should have uh, here. This is one of my favorite pages where he's trying to eat, and it's kind of hard to see, but he's. Can you see it? Yeah. So she goes through all these various foods and the brother says, well, he can't eat those with his fingers. And that's how she ends up with the latkes. Mm, well, these are Jewish <laughs> foods. Yeah, it's all Jewish foods. Everything that she so, tries to give him are, there's latkes, I mean, there's matzo ball soup, um, noodle kugel, the different foods. <laughs> <laughs> are, 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 you, are you, do you cook all these uh, foods? No, I do the latkes. Every year, the women in our family get together and we have a big latke making party. And that, that's really the most fun of Hanukkah, is the women getting mm. together cooking. Potato and onions. Onions and flour. And potatoes. And, and potatoes. And a lot of love. <laughs> and, and a few eggs. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, the eggs. Yeah, okay. But I mean... And tequila, no. <laughs> oh, those are, those are latkes I can go for. Um, so, so it, it's incredible. And, and your book sold out in two months and it's now in a second printing. And that is also very rare. And you have another book coming out. Can you talk about it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's already been announced. It's called Easter eggs and matzo balls. It's the same two characters <laughs> only this time. Now it's the brother because he celebrates Easter. He wants to make Easter special for his sister who is now celebrating her first Easter. So he's trying to find something to put in the golden egg that the Easter Bunny's bringing. He's working with the Easter Bunny, trying to bring his sister something special for Easter. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's no pa there's no Passover in. in oh yeah, story? yeah. Well, yes. You know, no, no. It's Passover at the same time, but it's but it's there's a lot. It, everything that he's trying to put into the Easter egg is related to Passover. So it's a little more complicated of a story, but. Um, but I think it's going to do well too. I mean, it's the same audience, people that celebrate both those holidays. You know, I, I, I must say that I'm surprised. I'm happily surprised that the book is going so well because in my day, you were either Jewish or Christian. Right. You know, if you were Jewish, you bought the Hanukkah book <laughs> for your kids. If you were Christian, you bought a Jesus or a Santa Claus book. And I, you know, it's a good thing I'm not the purchasing agent because I wouldn't have taken the book. I'm thinking but to I myself, think I want to say, I'm thinking to myself, 
the Jews are not going to buy a book about Santa Claus, and the Gentiles are not going to buy a book about Latkes. And I, I'm wrong. Explain. Well, no, you're right in a sense. You are. I there were some people, you know, the very orthodox on either side. That, I mean, I didn't have an audience there. It was like I had, you know, I gave away a lot of books to friends. There were families who said, "Oh, my my kids, we 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 wouldn't want this book in our house," you know. But when I went to the bookstores and I saw the book, I would I sold the book every time I went in there to sign copies. I mean, there were so many people. Oh my God, this is I met a lady in the market. I was looking at um, it was Passover, not Passover. What am I saying? It was Hanukkah, and actually the first year was Hanukkah and Christmas were closer together. This last year they were so far apart that it, actually I had first the book was on the one table and then it moved to the Christmas table, but. I met people and I, they were talking about latkes and I said, oh, I said, and I'm very good at marketing myself. If you're with friends that are with me, realize, oh my God, I'm out there because someone will go, oh, I love your hair. And I go, oh, well, here, here's my bookmark. Why don't you buy my book? And, <laughs> um, and I happen to look. <laughs> you know how to get to Wiltshire Boulevard. Oh yeah, and by the way, I'm a writer. <laughs> exactly, so, so many people, I met a woman in, actually in Gelson's who said, oh, this is perfect. My son just married a non-Jewish girl. We celebrate both holidays. And um, everywhere I went, I met people that were sent. So I think the timing was right. Like you had said, growing up, I didn't know anybody who really was celebrating both holidays. I mean, you we didn't have a Christmas tree growing up. Uh, most of my friends, except for one of my very best friends, who um, just trying to listen to me at the moment, um, everybody celebrated Hanukkah. And I... That's how it was. And it's just, I think the world's just changing. I think my, the time was right. That's what took so long to sell this book. And it took you 15 years. The idea was originated probably even longer than that. I think I had the idea about 25 years ago. I didn't start right. Then I wrote it as a poem. It was like, I thought it was perfect. You know, I, I was going to be the next poet laureate. And, and this is the best rhyme ever. I had an agent who said, get rid of the rhyme. She goes, I go, oh. My rhyme anyway so it got rid of the rhyme and it just went through various various changes until finally i thought it was ready to send out i kept sending it out and getting rejected and then finally this in 2019 is when i sold it and it came out in 2020. so you can consider yourself extremely talented well, fortunate you. and uh, can you read a few lines from the from the book please also, let me add, I, it's also perseverance. There's a lot of perseverance in there and believing in yourself. I mean, you well, you know, we Jews, we've been wandering <laughs> for 2000 years. What's 15 years to a Jew? I know, right. Okay. Um, well, here's the page. This is one of my favorite pages. And she is trying to, she's going to cook, the little girl says to her brother, um, she's going to make matzo balls. And then she starts to think, because she tells her, well, Santa can't eat matzo balls. And she goes, <laughs> She imagined balls of matzah zooming by, Santa gulping on his sled. Slurp, burp, slop, spill, matzah balls on Santa's head. And aside, Michael was right. Matzah ball soup would never do. And then it goes through, it repeats that refrain as with each food until the very end. When um, okay. Do you want to uh, spoil it all and read the end? When well, Santa falls in love with uh, Latkes? No. You know, let's see. Well, um, let's see what. Okay, so the beginning, she le leaves him a text message or an email saying that she's going to leave him something special. So in the end, and when he wakes up, she goes, "It's Christmas!" Michael shouted, startling Anna. She jumped out of bed and they scrambled into the living room. My cookies are all gone, Michael whooped. So are my latkes. Anna danced around. See that still everything has both holidays on the page. Michael frowned at her. You gave him luck. They are perfect to eat with your fingers. Anna wiggled her fingers in Michael's face. Just then the computer ding, singling a new email. To Anna from Santa at the North Pole. I love your latkes. So did Mrs. Claus. Can you please send her the recipe to add to her cookbook? I can't wait to see what special treat you leave me next year, Santa. So he's waiting for next year for another treat from her. But, he's I, but, but you know, cr cr Christians everywhere are going to worry about Santa's weight problem <laughs> and, his, and his high cholesterol. Well, cookies aren't that great either, are they? I know, but there's probably a lot of books, you know, on Santa, Santa's new diet or something. 
Santa, stay away from those cookies. So, so Janie, that's it's really wonderful. It, it is a miracle. Uh, tell us a little bit about your writing life. You, you, you. Um, I read that you started reading newspaper articles when you were three and uh, reciting no, no, was, them. <laughs> no, what I used to do at the very beginning. I, a lot. Of, this is my sister. It was, I dedicate this to her. Um, I would read her the newspaper in the morning. I mean, when we were old enough to read, and I would put her name into the story. Like you know, there was a a little girl, you know, running down the block with a doll, and I go, and Arlie was running so fast down, and she'd go, "I'm in the paper," and I go, "No, you're not really in the paper." <laughs> but I realized I had this ability to catch her imagination, and then I just started writing stories in my head and. For kids, I, I wrote a, I read a story in the sixth grade to the whole classroom, which was some depressing story. I don't, I think I have it somewhere. So I've just been writing my entire life. It took a long time to get published. I had the very first thing was in a, was a rhymed poem called The Jogging Frog in um, Turtle Magazine. And then um, after that, I, I've sold a, a, a YA novel. I have a, a time travel romance coming out any, in a few months from Wild Rose Press, it's for adults. Um, but I write a lot of interviews, um, I mean, I, not interviews. I do a lot of, um, articles. I do, I write for ARP and, uh, I've written for the Washington Post and just different Huffington Post when that was big. So I, yeah. I'm always, I'm always writing. Um, but my lo big love is writing children's books. That's my favorite thing to do. Absolutely. So, um, you, uh, is that what you studied? Did you study? Um... Oh, I actually, <laughs> I had got a degree in psychology and then I worked as a bookkeeper <laughs> for about 40 years. I still do a li very little bit of bookkeeping on the side. But so, that's where um, I, you know, I was a bookkeeper most of my life. That's fine. Keeping books is good. Yeah, paid the bills. I, I mean, you were a bookkeeper and, and a book writer, bookkeeper by day, book writer <laughs> by night. Right, I was. I've always been writing. I got. I've had so many agents and broken up with so many agents. I don't have one now. I am looking for an agent. I, I have a women's fiction novel that I wrote that I absolutely love, and I'm just trying to find the right agent for that. But it's hard. It's a tough. It's tough. You really, really have to have perseverance and believe that what you're doing is, and yet it still has to be fun. If you start to lose the joy in it, then then what's the sense? You know, life's too short not to enjoy what you're doing. So, so what, uh, what advice do you have to the 99.9% .9 of writers out there who don't have a book deal? Well, just don't give up. I mean, but take, but also like when the editor told me or the agent a long time ago said, get rid of the rhyme. I, I realized she was right. I mean, there are things you can't hang on to. I, I know, isn't it it's Stephen King or somebody says you have to kill your darlings, whatever that sentence is that like you have to kill off. It's hard, you're writing and all of a sudden, this character just isn't working and the other character says, you know, I don't want you in this book anymore. <laughs> and, you're, and you're writing and going, oh my God, I got to listen to this guy. He wants to take over those things. But that's the magical moment of writing too, when the characters come alive and you are drawn into this world that it just, oh, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Um, so my advice is just keep writing, but listen, like if you send something out to one agent and they say, no, that doesn't mean the book isn't Right. I mean, I got a lot of people saying no to this book, a lot. And they just, it wasn't for whatever reasons. And I kept, but I kept listening to what they were saying so that I made it better. And I didn't just, I, I listened to the advice that I felt was beneficial. And the advice that is not, you just, not everybody's going to like everything. Somebody loves, there's probably somebody out there who hates Gone with the Wind and somebody else who just thought it's the best movie ever made, you know? So, so um, I, I've been dying to ask you this question. Are you a religious person? No, um, spiritual more. I, since when I, I went to temple a lot more, my, my mom's 96 lives here with me. Wow. And um, we don't go to temple anymore, to get, but we observe all the holidays. We do Passover and um, Hanukkah, which is small. We do Rosh Hashanah, we do Yom Kippur, I fast. I mean, I, I, I don't belong to a temple at the time at the moment but i do um like to instill the jewish religion in, in my family I, I consider myself jewish but not like not real religious i guess spiritual i do believe in you know but yeah but i mean you're more religious 
to me than a lot of people who do go to temple. Yeah, I don't think you need to be in, go to temple to pray and to believe in God. You know, I, I live in Israel and I go to synagogue less than once a year. Oh, okay. Um, maybe once a year. Um, so, you know, you, you beat me cold. Um, and uh, Well, our I'm daughter not... was at Mitzvah, so we did, you know, we yeah. belonged. I, I wanted to ask you about your, your husband. Okay. Um, so he, you told me he's Catholic. Yes. So how, how did that work? How does it work? Is, is he become, is he fond of latkes now? Yes. What, Actually, what, what, what parts of Judaism and Jewish tradition has he become a sucker for? All of it, honestly. I mean, he he was not very um, religious. He actually went to Catholic school. And I think when he was in high school, he got kicked out of school. But Catholic school, I know you hear all those stories, you know. But um, he, when we were together, he, and we actually he used to go to temple with me at the beginning. He really did. He sort of embraced Judaism more than I went towards Catholicism. And we did the Easter and we did Christmas for him and for the kids growing up. But he's pretty much absorbed as a lot of people don't even know he's not Jewish, you know, because really at, in the 43 years we've been married, uh, Christ, Judaism is more prevalent in our home. But we, you know, we don't even have a Christmas tree anymore, really. I have a Christmas tree that in our house now, it, that's about this big, it's really little, but um, but the kids are, aren't here. My grandkids are growing up and we usually, so we haven't had a Christmas tree for years, but we did when they were little. We always had a Christmas tree. Okay, so, so what I, is the what what is the uh, legacy of your story? The legacy, uh, like where what's going to happen at next? <laughs> I mean, well, uh, you know, it 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 it's it's really uh, it's really outstanding to um, have a book that is so wacky and wonderful, where you're you're worried about feeding Santa Claus <laughs> Jewish food. Uh, I, I hope for this book that it goes on. I like it to become a classic. I, I, I mean, I don't know. This is what I told my editor. I go, I'm doing everything I can in, to make it a classic. The, um, the shortage, you know, the pandemic kind of put it at the beginning of 2021, last Christmas, I wasn't even sure the book was going to be available because it was, it was like going to be in a crater or off on the you know, dock somewhere. Um, but every year I just want to keep spreading the word and getting it out there more and more people. Cause I really do think this book could be around for a long, long time. I mean, I think it's, um, a lot of people can benefit. Families can learn from it too. You know, yeah, exactly. So, so, so for me, like the, the reader response, the, the benefit, the, the take home message. Take home message is that everybody really can get along. Like it doesn't really, we shouldn't be angry and fighting with each other because we have different uh, religious beliefs and centered around food is um i mean everybody likes to eat and kids it's it's a it's a twofold thing it's the two holidays but it's also a brother and sister learning to live together who are from different families and that is happening all over the place people step sisters and brothers i mean there's blended families even in the same religions so it has that aspect of the brother and sister learning to love each other and help each other in the end and also uh, recognize each other's beliefs. Like the same thing happens in the Easter eggs and matzo balls book. The little girl, they need, they, they don't really know about each other's holidays. It's just their first experience. So um, it's a different, you know, not. Okay, so I, you know. Yeah. No, because some people are going to say, well, is it good? that we should have this interaction uh we could jews could end up uh, losing uh, losing uh, hanukkah um the christians could uh, could make latkes as part of their liturgy um <laughs> is it good bringing these two religions that were once the same religion two thousand years ago and bringing them together i think it is i mean i mean when people come together it's always better than fighting you know, and I'm not saying, and I know like there's still gonna be a lot of people that are gonna, are gonna say, well, I don't, we don't want anything to do with Santa Claus in our house, so we're not gonna buy this book. And that's fine because everybody isn't like everything. But I think that making people like, uh, respect each other and learn about each other is a lot better than 
fighting. And they, and there are the other recipes. I mean, the other foods that are introduced in this book, a non-Jewish um, person might say, oh, God, I wonder what noodle kugel is. Man, we should go look up a noodle kugel recipe. <laughs> you know, and it's just two kids also. And there's the cookies. I mean, it's just, I think it teaches a lot. It teaches people to respect each other, love each other, and learn to get along with each other. Oh, I, I, Janie, I think, I think it's great. And, you know, as somebody who grew up in a... Um, in a uh, religious school where we were not allowed to enjoy anything about Christmas, not to sing all the Christmas carols that were written mostly by Jews, <laughs> um, not to know anything about Jesus, who was a Jewish rabbi. Um, and you know, I looked at your book, and it, it really is wonderful. And okay. I'm saying to myself, Oy vey, you know, <laughs> I missed all of this. I could have been had a Christmas tree and Santa Claus and sung the Christmas carols. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think anybody needs to, I'm not preaching to people to change religions or just get along, just understand the other one. And, and also there are all those families because when I first came out with the book, I hundreds of people we're emailing and getting, you know, Facebook and Instagram, where we're saying, oh my God, I need this book. Why, why wasn't this book written when I, for, for my kids who are grown now? Because there are just a lot of families that do celebrate more than one holiday. It doesn't, and it could be, you know, I, I'm actually trying to think of two other holidays to blame. I haven't come up with anything yet, but um, I've actually, after the Easter Passover book, I'd like to have another blended holiday. Uh, may, maybe you can make, make up two holidays with your creative, uh, creative head. Um, well, I, I was thinking of a story with um, maybe grandmothers that celebrate different things. I don't know, but something will come. <laughs> so, so listen, I, um, I really wanted to meet you. It's such a, um, it's such a wonderful idea. Uh, and it's, uh, it, it, it's so well meaning and it, it's, it's, it's drawing people together. Um, I would say not by religion, but but by by culture. I mean, yeah. nobody nobody prays to Santa Claus, right? Nobody yeah, prays yeah. to Latkes. No, you're right. You're right, and that's I think what made the book. Um, it, it, that's why it was so appealing to other side to people. I mean, to yeah. people that. I mean, I have I have also been told by people that celebrate just one holiday, they still liked the book because it introduced their child to the other holiday in a fun way. You know, yeah, so. no, I, I, I think I think it's great. I, yeah. um, I, I just had to meet the author <laughs> who, had, who had such a wonderful idea. Well, thank you so much. I can't. Uh, so listen, when the when Passover and Easter and matzah balls connect with the Easter bunny, right. uh, I, I want to interview you again, Jamie Emus. Okay, well, I would love that. I would really would love that. This this book was a little harder to write um, also because it was under more under pressure because I came up with the title and then I thought, now I got to write the book. And I tried to tie, <laughs> tried to tie it into food, but that didn't work. It just wasn't going to be a food thing, but it goes in, it, it has a lot of, um, it'll also have a glossary at the end. I think it's going to explain some more of, there's more, it's more complicated than, than the, this book is, but it'll have uh, descriptions of some of the Passover, um, like the Haggadah, and things that that people that don't celebrate both holidays may not understand. So, incredible. But I'm, I'm looking forward to the illustrations. And Brian Langdo, I got to just give a shout out to him. Brian. He is amazing. He did a good, such a good job on the first book. I'm looking forward to what he's doing with the next one. Yeah. Sometimes as authors, we forget that the the book rests on the uh, on the shoulders of the illustrators. Yeah. Yeah. He did an amazing job. He really did. I was blessed to have him as an illustrator and and uh nicole found him so yeah. mm -hmm. he's a and uh, and finally my last question is what what does what did santa claus have to say about the book was he well, happy he was very happy in fact <laughs> on christmas day you know when i was it was a very uh quiet christmas for us here because our family's all spread around this year um i got a and, and and because you're jewish right well, yes, but I would always do a Christmas dinner for my husband. But we did a Hanukkah and Thanksgiving. We're way too close together. In One second, opinion. you did a Christmas dinner I usually with your always, husband? No, no, I always usually would do a big Christmas dinner for my husband. With, 
with Christmas with pudding? Pudding? No, no, I no, I would make uh, whatever he wants, a ham or something. I don't know. But <laughs> um, I, I got it. This message is popping up on my screen here. I'm trying to get rid of them. Can you see it, those? It, no, oh but Santa, God, it's from Santa Claus. What um, does Santa Claus want to tell you? No, he told me on Christmas Day because he did come. We were having a small dinner. <laughs> He came and, and, well, he sent me a text message. He thanked me very much for introducing him to all of these other kids who don't really get a chance to have him come down the chimney. So he was really happy that, <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> that I introduced him to a whole, another whole generation of children. And he ho hopes that he keeps getting introduced year after year after no, year. But, but, you know, he has like a billion chimneys to go down every uh, Christmas. <laughs> What's going to be well, what's going to be with the Yidden? They have chimneys too. They have little children. So now you're introducing Jewish kids to, to Santa, mm -hmm. but he's he's not going to come visit them. Well, their parents will have to under explain to them. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't come visit you. You know, that is a tough. That's a tough question. It really is because now. But that's why I'm I'm saying that there are a lot of families that won't read the book because of that. They won't even want to introduce, and then because they might have to explain to him. Well, why he doesn't come to them? Although, I might, I, what I think they should say is, well, he's not going to. The Easter Bunny might not come to us, but that doesn't mean the Easter Bunny isn't something that everybody can enjoy. Santa may not come into our house, but we can still read about what Santa does because what you stop, yeah, and, and, and not read about other religions. And we have Elijah the prophet, you know, on right. Passover. Right. They don't. Right. And but that doesn't mean that. Just because Elijah doesn't come to your house, you don't want to know who he is and learn about him. You don't want to grow up and be so in your own little cubby hole, like, oh my God, I don't even know what this is. Like, I sh you should know about various religions. And it starts when you're younger. You introduce people, like they grow up, and they don't, you don't want them to grow up and think, oh, well, I don't want to like you because you had Santa come to your house. You know, <laughs> you know, you want people to like each other. That's my biggest thing. I want everybody to get along understand that they're, you're not, you're a lot more alike than everybody that you are different. I Listen, if, if Santa Claus can fall in love with Latkes, then anything can happen. We can have world peace. Uh, Janie, it was great meeting you. I just got, I was is, gonna say one last thing. I yeah. was going to, if it hadn't been for the pandemic, I was going to take a bunch of Latkes over to the malls where the kids line up to, <laughs> To have Santa sign. That was my first thing for the year the book came out. I was going to just walk up and down and hand latkes out with my business card to all of the kids waiting in line to have Santa, you know, have their picture taken. And of course, that's life. It didn't happen. But okay, but I you know, come 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 December, you could be Santa Claus <laughs> and give uh, and give out latkes to the children. Well, if the pan yes, if the pandemic's over, I plan on doing a lot more. Yeah, you, you, you can be Santa Cohen. Okay. <laughs> All right, I can be. Uh, <laughs> listen, listen, this was great. Uh, Janie Emus, uh, congratulations on your wonderful book. Um, and uh, may you have many more successes. It is an incredible story. It's, it's a, it is a miraculous story. Um, those of us who are writing know how rare it is. Your... Uh, your success, and uh, may it lead to even greater successes uh, in the future. And uh, I'm uh, Mel Rosenberg for the New Book Network, the uh, new channel on children's literature. And this has been a wonderful interview with Janie Emus on Thank her you. book, Latkes for Santa Claus. Thank you so much, and, Mel. Uh, may, wonder may wonderful miracles continue to happen for all of us. And uh, and world peace. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs>